Okay, we have reached the fourth in our series of videos looking at Ghana as a, as a little development case study and thinking about three synoptic essay questions related to the extracts. Uh, this one, this video, will look at the micro and macro consequences of remittances for the Ghanaian economy. And it's clearly the case that for many African nations, sub-Saharan African nations, particularly in West Africa, remittances are one of the biggest single external financing flows uh, into the economy. Uh, the question we're going to look at is, using the data and your own knowledge, assess one micro and one macroeconomic consequence of large remittance flows, inflows for the Ghanaian economy. Extract 2 uh, is going to be crucial to this one. Uh, it's a, remittances, of course, is a form of external finance for countries, along with private debt and equity flows, overseas aid, and FDI. Those are the four main sources of external finance. At a micro level, many Ghanaian families depend on remittances uh, for things like education, health and rent. And also, there's a, a flow from the diaspora to fund construction of residential and commercial buildings. Uh, quite strong remittance flows into Ghana, 5% increase in 2020, despite the pandemic, to $3.6 billion. Research evidence from the World Bank indicates that a 1% increase in remittance can lead to approximately 4% increase in GDP per capita, which is quite interesting. And it links to what we talked about in the last video, the mobile money systems uh, means that Ghana people in Ghana can easily receive remittances from overseas in their wallet at a, at a transaction fee, which is, of course, a big issue. But it allows them to, to engage in savings plans and mobile insurance. Here's the data. Uh, I think it was figure three. Indeed, it did. It was showing remittances as a share of GDP. And they peaked in 2015 at 20%. Not quite sure what was happening there, but they, they've been pretty solid, although declining in recent times. Uh, the last couple of years have been about 5% of GDP. But that's pretty substantial. OK, so on the micro side, don't forget, a micro focus on households and businesses. That gives you a nice little structure to answer your questions. So in terms of households, clearly remittances flowing into Ghana will add to household disposable incomes. And that in turn will help to reduce the incidence of extreme poverty, people living on less than $1.90 a day, PPP. So go back to the data in extract four and extract two. For that, there was some lovely data on uh, human development um, progress in Ghana. People have more disposable income, then this allows them to spend more, but also save more, and perhaps allocate more of that scarce income to education and health, better nutrition, educating more of the young children in a family, for example. So there's all kinds of micro effects at the household level. However, in, in terms of evaluation, uh, we know that there's a very high cost of money transfer from overseas diaspora. So companies like uh, Western Union and MoneyGram charge a pretty hefty percentage uh, on any money transferred. So some of that money is lost. And there's also a fear that very strong inflows of remittances could, in theory, cause demand pull inflation, which can bring down the real income effect of the benefits of remittances. At a micro level, in terms of businesses, remittances are quite important in funding micro entrepreneurship, small startups, particularly businesses set up by women and by young people. So in that sense, remittances... Uh, provide a flow of you know, like seed finance for businesses and can help address some of the embedded structural gender inequalities. Remittances lift per capita incomes. Remember that data? 1% increase in remittance can lead to a 4% rise in per capita incomes. And if that's the case, that lifts consumption of goods and services. And if that lifts consumption, businesses stand to make more revenue and profit particularly those businesses providing basic services and basic products uh, to, to relatively poor households. But on the evaluation side, strong remittances coming in, more than 5% of GDP in 2020, might lead to a currency appreciation. You need to explain that, because of course the money has to be converted into the Ghanaian CD. And if the currency appreciates, that might make Ghanaian exports less price competitive, which will be damaging. There's also an argument that the remittances coming in are the result of a brain drain in previous years, and that will impact on labour shortages for many domestic businesses. On the macro side, 
Uh, I think probably you might bring in the concept of the savings gap, the currency gap and the savings gap, that remittances are an alternative. Um, I've misspelled that. I'll, just type it, I'll, put in the, I'll put in the R there, alternative, sorry, to FDI and aid to overcome the savings gap. So in other words, that it means that Ghana is less reliant on aid and less reliant on private and debt equity flows. It lifts per capita incomes, and therefore that helps to drive growth in terms of consumption. And the Ghanaian government will also generate more savings because they can claim more tax revenues. My evaluation point is that FDI, uh, although, although remittances are strong, oftentimes remittances are not necessarily the catalyst for an economic transformation. In many ways, they reinforce existing patterns of employment and patterns of spending. If you're looking for a structural change in the Ghanaian economy, remember extract one was about primary product dependence, heavy reliance, for example, on oil and cocoa and precious metals. So if you're looking to change the structure of the economy, a structural change, if you like, then perhaps FDI is more important than remittances, particularly if you want to develop manufacturing, tourism and financial sectors. On the balance of payments, remittances are a key source of secondary income, which obviously helps Ghana's current account. And it also helps to boost Ghana's foreign exchange reserves, reserves of dollars, for example, which is quite useful for countries that need to, to cover import payments. It also means that Ghana is less exposed to external debt, which I think was 38% of GDP, but pretty close. However, on the current account, again, remittances might lead to a currency appreciation, which reduces price competitiveness of their exports, worsening the trade balance. So there we go. We have worked our way through three synoptic questions on Ghana. These questions, they're 25 markers on paper three. You know, they're not full essays. It's just basically a five-paragraph answer. Don't, don't try and spend 45 minutes on it. You've only got 25 or 30, 30 minutes or so. As long as you keep to a nice, neat structure, use the data and build analytical chains of reasoning with some, some solid evaluation, you'll be absolutely fine. And uh, I wish you well in any question that appears. Take care and see you soon.